avoiding a landmine in a troop transport vehicle, military acronym LMTV, in the Parwan province of Afghanistan in 2004. He emerges and returns to the United States with an even more compelling tale of perseverance as he navigates the rapids of the troubled VA system. He gains a new perspective with a fever of enthusiasm to all patriots across the windswept fields of America. Landing Zone LZ, Winter Springs, Oviedo, Florida Line, 32708, Seminole County, America, USA. This is the Remember the Fallen Show, where on occasion my guests will be ground pounders, army, nasty guy like myself, jarheads, marines, wing nuts, air force, and penguins we call them because 90% of them have wings but don't fly, and squids, navy, and coasties, coast guy, uh, maybe not as a guest. But most of all, the show is about patriots like yourself. They get a lump in their throat when they hear the national anthem being played or weep on the shame when Taps is being played as well. All right, this week's show, we're back on our home turf. We're at Never Forgotten Memorial's studio on the Seminole County, America, Oviedo, Winter Springs line. And you remember last week's show, if you tuned in, we showcased a National Veterans Service Organization and vets at their National 74th Convention here in Orlando, the Caribbean Resort. And so I've been pondering on how soon I was going to do one here. Well, I got word of a local veteran service organization, which I am a member of since 2015. You see, the majority of the VSO members out there, they have to finish their, their contract with the military before they join these veteran service organizations. The majority of them do. So I got out in 2014. So I uh, basically just stumbled across Post 183 and Old Glory in Fern Park, Altamont Springs line with, on beautiful Lake Prairie. you got to come on over if you're a veteran or a son of a veteran or auxiliary, come check it out and you'll see why the majority of the VSO members out there join. Well, what they do is, they, uh, like myself, we don't hang up our uniforms forever. So what we do is we, we wear a different hat and the mission continues with their community. With, and what better post than to start my first show on, and once again, it's the American Legion Post 183 Old Glory on the Fern Peak Altamont Springs line. And the new commander, Dennis Larson, reached out to a local state representative, District 30, Bob Cortez, from the Altamont Springs area. And his district covers sections of uh, Orange and Seminole. And uh, he campaigned for Bob, uh, held signs for Bob. I'm on his video, if you pull up his Bob. I'm that, that guy who's smiling on the left real quick, like a split second. If you look real hard, you'll see me. All right, so back to the show. And uh, basically, they got together. They said, let's have a meet and greet. Not a town hall political thing. Just veterans reaching out to their state representative. And this just happened last Monday night, August 20th. And it was success. So before I bring out both of these patriots on the show, I want to cover the, the amazing timeline of the American Legion. The American Legion was chartered by Congress in 1919 as a patriotic veterans organization, focusing on service to veterans, service members, and communities. The Legion evolved from a group of war-weary veterans or World War I. Hoorah! Right? Into one of the most influential non-profit groups in the United States. Membership swiftly grew to over 1 million, and local posts sprang up across the country. Today, membership stands at over 2 million and more than 13,000 posts worldwide. The posts are organized into 55 departments, one each for the 50 states, along with the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, France, Mexico, and even the Philippines, right? Over the years, the Legion has influenced considerable social change in America. Won hundreds of benefits for veterans and produced many important programs for children and youth. Following is a chronology of of significant dates in Legion history that I chose that were important to me. In 1919, March 15th to March 17th, members of the American Expeditionary Force convened in Paris for the first American Legion Caucus, okay? These guys were the War One weary veterans that got together and said, hey, let's get together in France before we go back to the States and let's put this together. So on that same year, November 10th to the 12th, the first Legion Convention convenes. They got back to the States in Minneapolis and the Constitution and Preamble were adopted. And then in 1920s, August 9th, 1920, the Legion efforts resulted in the creation of the U.S. Veterans Bureau, forerunner of the Veteran Administration. 
administration, you know, the VA. So today, the Legion continues to lobby for adequate funding to cover medical, disability, education, other benefits for veterans. All right, on September 1932, the Sons of the American Legion is officially recognized during the 1932 National Convention in Portland, Oregon. All right, December 15, 1943, past National Commander Harry W. Comey starts to write in longhand on the Mayflower Hotel stationery in Washington and the first draft of what will later become the G.I. Bill of Rights, considered the Legion's single greatest legislative achievement. Yeah, I got my education with the G.I. Bill and a lot of us Thousands and hundreds of thousands of veterans also have. And then on June 12, 1944, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed into law the original GI Bill, or Service Members Readjustment Act, ushering in the monumental change in U.S. society. Higher education becomes democratized after 8 million veterans go to school on the GI Bill, get better jobs, buy houses in the suburbs, and raise families. For every dollar spent on educating veterans, the U.S. economy eventually gets $7 back. All right, good job, FDR. On September 1st, the Legion voiced great concern over the fate of prisoners of war in Vietnam in 1966. Today, the Legion urges a full accounting of all POWs and troops missing in action and has formed a special group from among the nation's major veterans organizations to continue pressing for further resolution of this issue. Now let's fast forward a few decades. August 26, 1982, the Legion presents a $1 million check to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund for construction of the wall in Washington, becoming the largest single contributor to the project. I bet you didn't know that, audience, huh? Yeah, they were behind the wall. Okay, on July 21, 1983, the Legion announces its sponsorship of an independent study on the effects of of exposure to Agent Orange on Vietnam War veterans. Congress receives the results of the American Legion Columbia University study of Vietnam-era veterans in 1989. Really? The VA in Congress since 1989? It's almost been a generation. Ah, oh, that gets my, my old positive boiling. Okay, back to the show. On January 1st, 1989, the Veterans Administration is elevated to cabinet-level status at the Department of Veteran Affairs, VA. The Legion fought hard for the change, arguing that veterans deserve representation at the highest levels of government. August 2nd, 1990, Legion filed suit against the federal government for failure to, to gut a Congress-mandated state about the effects of Agent Orange on veterans who served in Vietnam. Here we go again! Here we go again! Same old crap again! Old. Sorry, I couldn't resist. My favorite cadence, Fort McClellan, Alabama. Okay, on August, uh, let's see, August, October 1st, 1995, the Legion forms the Persian Gulf Task Force to enhance service for the newest generation of wartime veterans, thousands of them who suffer from illnesses linked to their service in the region. And most recent now, in 2014, in the midst of a VA waiting list scandal that reached up to the deaths of veterans waiting for care. We remember that, right? The American Legion calls for the resignation of several top officials, including VA Secretary Eric Shinseki. The scandal would ultimately engulf multiple facilities and offices. The Legion kept the issue in front of the public in Congress via articles and testimony. Yeah, right after the, the uh, American Legion got involved, we went out there in 2015 with uh, Concerned Veterans for America and we uh, helped with the uh, Accountability Act. That, that was uh, quite an experience for me. On right, June 20, June 2017, created to hold VA employees more accountable. Yeah, this is it. The Department of Veterans Affairs Accountability and Whistleblower Protection Act of 2017 is passed by Congress in concert with the American Legion. A long-time goal of the Legion, the legislation gives the VA Secretary the authority to terminate the employment. Yeah, you're fired of VA employees who not hold the standard of the VA mission to help veterans. The American Legion worked hard with Congress, VA, 
and others to create and pass this much needed veteran centric legislation. August 2017, not too long ago, the Legion assists in the creation and eventual passage of the Veterans Appeals Improvement and Modernization Act, which modernizes the current appeals process as the Department of Veterans Affairs, forcing VA to render a decision on veterans' claims within one year. How about within one month? Come on! Okay, August 2017, Denise H. Rohan of Wisconsin is elected National Commander, the first woman to hold the role in the Legion's history. They have come a long way, baby. Now, before we go on our commercial break to support our sponsors, we're going to start a new movement. For the ones that are fit in the audience, you have two breaks of three minutes each. You're going to knock out 22 everyday push-ups for 22 everyday push soldiers that take their lives for some ungodly reason and some of us can understand the reason also so we want the fit ones out there to knock out 22 everyday push-ups for our veterans that take their lives you're listening to the spark radio network internet radio like you've never heard before innovation creativity and imagination are all set to begin with a spark so fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit BlackWolfPublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. 
1-0. Okay, we're back from our show, and I got Dennis Larson, the commander of Post 183, Old Glory, on the line. And Commander, it's, it's, I appreciate you coming on the show. You know, you guys helped me back in 2015. I don't know if you were aware of that. When I first launched the Never Forgot Memorial Organization, you helped me out put up events by your beautiful Prairie Lake. So glad to hear from you, um, Commander. So, Commander, tell me a little bit about yourself. I know you've been with Post 183 for quite some time. So give, let's give a little history to the audience out there. And this is Dennis Lawson, commander of Post 183. Take it over, Dennis. Well, thank you, Dave. It's a pleasure being here tonight. Um, yeah, I've been with the Post probably 12 or 13 years, you know, which um, I was a judge advocate on the executive board for probably three years. I was a canteen manager, taking care of all the functions and activities and things like that for four or five years, and recently became the commander. Outstanding. Yeah, I was so happy to hear that. All right. You put your time over there, Dennis. You have. And, you know, the American Legion's done so much. You know, over the years, the Legion has influenced considerable social change in America, won hundreds of benefits for veterans, and produced many important programs for children and youth. Can you share with us what Post 183 does for the children and youth out there in the community? Oh, sure. You know, we do Special Olympics every year we sponsor that and send people to the event here in Orlando. Um, and we do the Legacy Fund, which is the, the fund for fallen soldiers' children to make sure that they, they get a college education if they so desire. You know, it's taken care of for them. Oh, you know, it's, it's just great programs. Oh, Legacy Foundation, huh? Is Can you just put Google that? LegacyFoundation.org and yes. it'll come up? Great. Yes. We'll make sure we'll, we'll put that out there again. And also, you know, I've been to your post. Yeah, I'm a member. And um, I've been to the post twice where you did KISS, which is that is kids in support kids in, of soldiers, right? Yes, we do that quarterly. We um, pack boxes for frontline soldiers. As long as they're stationed overseas, KISS sends them boxes. You know, it's just a little bit from home. You know, candies and cookies and magazines and just a little touch of home in front lines is what that is. And it's, you know, we've had a lot of positive response from that from the soldiers returning home that they enjoyed that every month in that box. Oh, that is great. It is. That definitely is something that just look forward to every month. They get a box coming from overseas, and it makes feel like, you know, what they're doing is if people uh, appreciate what they do, and that, that's important, too. And also, you got something to do with canine. Can you share with us what, what you're doing with canines? Yeah, we do. Um, we sponsor canine for warriors, um, which is dogs that are trained to help disabled veterans. You know, uh, that was really put through through our auxiliary president, her fund for the, for the year for the state. Uh, participate in that every, every month. Oh, that's a great program. I heard of K-9 Warriors. That's across the country as well. But most recently, you did something really outstanding, I heard. Uh, Dennis, you went out of your way and you reached out to the local state rep- representative from District 30, Bob Cortez, who I've been campaigning for. You know, I'm so glad you reached out to him and you, and you had a talk with him. And then you invited him to the post just recently, Monday night. Can you share with me how that was, how engaging that was, and how you, you guys were received and how they were received with Bob and, and back and forth? How was the group? How was that night? Bob, Bob's a great individual. Uh, very concerned about veterans. He's got his son-in-law and his daughter, I believe it is, are in the Air Force, which is, a, you know, he flies C-130s. And his other son, I believe, is in the in the Navy. So he's, you know, he's got a personal stake in the military, but he's a big veteran advocate. You know, we probably had 20 people at the meeting the other night, 25. It was very interactive. It was, you know, and, and Bob was, was just, just real. I mean, he got down and talked to everybody about anything they asked. And um, we had some wonderful comments after he left about what a great experience that was for him to come in and discuss things with, with the members. Right. Yeah, it's always good to have that kind of, especially with someone who, who's close by. He's in Altamont Springs. He covers, I guess, two counties, Orange and Seminole, pieces of it. So that's great to have someone that's so receptive, that, that is already involved with the veteran, and he has your ear. So that's great. He can help uh, hopefully influence what's going on with the VA and stuff like let's talk more about your post the your post you have 268 members is that true that's correct um and, and, and it's a mix you know we've got army navy air force coast guard marines um you know there is there isn't a dominant one they're, they're all pretty it's pretty equal right and uh what are they mainly vietnam war veterans era or yes, is it little, yes. 
So you got the yeah. older generation there, yeah. So I, you know, what I found out is these other veteran service organizations, they're kind of dwindling down because they're getting up there in age. Have you guys, you know, have you thought of a way to get some younger youth into the program, into into the membership? Is there a way to get a younger crowd in there? We actually had a sponsorship set up at Kaiser University and UCF with a person from the from our post out there mentoring some of the young soldiers coming back you know and we we get some and we get some members from that oh that's great you, you are think you're thinking ahead of the curve Dennis good job I really do appreciate you reaching out to the transitional soldiers that are coming back. Yes. who need that veteran service officer. So you keep your veteran service officer busy? Do you have one on duty at all times? Yes, yes, Scott Cabrera. He's on duty 100% of the time. I'm very knowledgeable and willing to help with, it, with any any needs that come, come up. Which is great, and that's a free service, right? You just got to be a member. Yes. Come in, set up an appointment with him, and he'll walk you through, make you sure you're doing the right paperwork, and he'll help you get your first claim under your belt with the VA, right? Lake Nona, right? Yes, yes. And, oh. and you really don't have to be a member of our post to do that. Just a member of the, of the American Legion or, as far as that goes, anyone that, that needs help. You know, he's involved in, in helping all of them. Oh, that's great. I love it. That's good. I'm good to hear that you uh, will help any soldier that comes back. They don't have to be a member. Yes. Oh, that's yes. outstanding. Well, hey, Dennis, you know, anything up and new coming that you want to share with the audience before I, I put Bob Cortez on the line? Well, you know, this this past year was was a huge monument for us at, at the American Legion 183 in Fern Park. It's the first time in history of the American Legion that we had a state commander and a state auxiliary president and a state squadron commander all out of the same post in one year at the same time. It's never been done in the American Legion. <laughs> all right. You know? All right. You, you know, hit a milestone. Time. That's a personal best, right? You hit a great timeline. Yeah, that's so cool. And um, what else I wanted what was to uh, ask you was... Um, on uh, the veterans. Do you see yourself doing another kind of like veterans uh, meeting again with other veterans, maybe with other representatives, other state people? Uh, any, any opportunity I get, I'll get someone in there to talk because it doesn't hurt the people involved and, and make them aware. The awareness is the, the wonderful thing of it. Okay. The K-9 for Warriors event, the 22nd of September, um, which should bring, should bring some more awareness for us. 22nd of September. I'm going to put that out there and we'll make sure we get it out in the airwaves. Hey, Dennis, man, I, I salute you you moving all the way up to commander you're doing a great job and i can't wait to sit down and have a barrier with you at the bar i want to thank you again for all you're doing for the american legion and for all you do for all soldiers all branches you are a great man in what you're doing i appreciate you dennis dave i appreciate that and you come see us i sure will all right over and out we're going to get back uh to bob cortez very shortly i'm going to get him on the line and we'll be talking to you very shortly. okay here we have now our next patriot guest is we have Bob Cortez, State Representative, District 30. I think he's out of Altamont. He covers uh, two pieces of uh, Orange County and Seminole County. Bob Cortez, it's great to see you. Great to hear from you. I, I you remember the first time we met, you you helped me with the memorial for Brandon and Salazar over in Rock and Brews in 2015. Do you remember that day, Bob? Obviously, yeah, that was uh, our first time together, but then we've done a lot of more things together, you and I. Obviously, we stayed close and... uh we participated in other stuff uh, together, which has been great. Yeah. You had me campaigning, holding signs, and all kinds of stuff, right? <laughs> Even got a little video of me on your um, on your BobCortez.com page. Yeah, I, I, I'm really, um, I'm honored to help you out because you, you have a lot to say and do with the military. So tell me, Bob, why is it that you are so passionate armed forces? Well, you know, it, it, it all goes back into family. You know, the, the core principles that I have is, is family. And family, of course, I'm proud of my family, which my son is currently serving in the Navy. He's an MA-1, a Master of Arms 1, uh, serving on the H.W. Bush aircraft carrier in Norfolk, Virginia. So, Hoorah! Uh, all right! <laughs> uh, I got my son, and, you know, he's been there now eight years, and I'm proud of him for what he does. And then I've got my son-in-law, Jonathan, who's a major in the Air Force, flying C-130 stationed in the... Uh, Scott Air Force Base also. So we, we are a military family. We're proud of our kids for what they do and serve our country. And of course, just like everybody else, we are, you know, we can, we're concerned for them every time they, they go and, and leave and there's 
months you haven't heard from them, you know, you, you don't want to get that dreaded knock on the door. Obviously, you want them to come all home safe. Yeah, but, you know, proud of the, what they do for us always. And uh, because of that, I know that, like myself, a parent who has children in the military, there's thousands out there. And we want to make sure that our boys and girls are, are taken care of. Yeah, we do appreciate that. But being out there in the community level and working with uh, so many veteran organizations, yeah, we need more people like you um, in Congress, you know, uh, representing us. And we do appreciate what you're doing for District 30. And so how is the campaign going, Bob? It's been, what, four years now? Absolutely. We got, you know, it's uh, hard to believe that now we are going on to our uh, fifth year. Four, four years, two terms are, are, are in the books. We are going on our third, but there's still a lot of work to do, Dave. You know, we, we started a lot of good work. My first bill I ever passed uh, as a legislature was a simple bill that was called the All-American Flag Act. You remember that one? That I, was, uh, I do. Point. I remember that. I was so proud of that when you yeah. ha- had some great talking points at Rock and Brew with that. And that yeah, ties correct. in with the Old Glory, the post, too, because it's called yeah. Old Glory. That is great. That's right. And, you know, basically it's that if we're spending taxpayer money in, the, in the Florida to uh, buy flags, they should be flags made in the U.S., no place else made, not made in China, not made in Taiwan, but made in the U.S., and we made it law, and now every government agency that buys the flag to do that, and we found out while we're doing this that the Department of Defense, when they drink the, the coffins of our service members and that, that, that pass, they are required to be made in the U.S., so, you know, we, we are our, our, our fallen with this, and this is something that we believe strongly, and we passed the law, so I was very proud to pass that law. Governor Scott signed it into law, and him and I went together a few places to uh, do ceremonial signings, and it was great. Everybody oh. loved it. Oh, man, that is <laughs> awesome. You know, I'm building a fallen memorial at the New Rock and Brews out in Kissimmee, right? It's uh-huh. at the New Margarita Orlando Resort, and it's it's going to be a shadow box, stainless steel shadow box. And Bob, you're right. I am making sure I am going to the uh, the flag place on Colonial Drive, right by I-4, where they per- only sell American flags. So I am definitely going to go there and make sure that is made in America flag for that memorial. All right, Bob. So since I'm in kind of like in your district and I know kind of what you're doing, but I'm going to hit you with this. So, Bob, what have you done lately? Because people are going to say, what have you done for me? You want you want me to vote for you? But just go ahead. Tell us what you have you done lately for our community, for our veterans, so we can get out there and put your name on the ballot and vote for you again and again and again. What? So what have you done lately, Bob? Well, Dave, that, that's a great question. And, you know, a lot of folks, uh, it's kind of confusing how, how we are. And people think that we are, you know, the federal government that does federal issues and and Medicare, Medicaid, or or Social Security, and we're more of the state issue that deals with the state budget and the road rates here, and health care, and everything else like that. You know, a good representative is not one that just passes legislation or bills or anything else. That's one part of the job. The good, a good legislator is the one that is down in the community that answers the call when somebody's power goes out. You know, last year during the storms, you know, we had Irma hit a lot of people, and some people were out of power out 10 days. I mean, I was out there with my chainsaw, you know, clearing some trees and helping folks in there in the community clean it up and then getting dirty myself and making phone calls with Duke Energy and helping Duke Energy identify the places that needed power. Dominic and Maitland was a key, key community that was without power and it always has the issue without power and we're there. So, you know, we dealt with those issues. We dealt with some of the flooding on 1792 recently. We dealt with the, our state attorney when she refused to prosecute folks on the death penalty. We went toe-to-toe with her. You know, a good representative is one that is not just passing legislation or passing new laws, but can identify the things that are bothering or hurting folks in the community and act immediately upon those and find resolutions. Right, and I, I saw you at the at the, the event was called uh, I think it was called uh, the Puerto Rican Chamber of Commerce over there at uh, Tony Suarez uh, Mortgage Company, and um, I saw you out there uh, rubbing elbows once again with the community and socializing and getting a chance to people see who you are and what you're made of. Any new events coming up, Bob, that uh, people can see you at? Everybody, although I am not in the primary ballot, I don't have a primary opponent. You'll see 
see my name in the general election coming up. The most important thing right now, bar none, folks, go out to vote. You know, this is key. You have elections coming up. You have people on the local level. You have people on the state level. You have people on the federal level and even the state government. There was a primary. So these primaries will determine who will have the chance to challenge the, the rest of in the general. You know, exercise your right to vote. People, there's many ways to do it. I went today, Dave. I went to Bear Castle Party with you and I uh, signed way together and did a lot of stuff. I went with my wife this, this afternoon and I early voted. Oh. And, uh, yeah. Two, three, in and out. Yeah, so you went to Oxford Road Library. Correct. I went oh. to Oxford Road Library today. In and out. I mean, it took us five minutes. In and out. No lines, no waiting. Uh, the, the, our seminal uh, supervisor of election, Mike Rattel, does a wonderful job on that. He oh, does. In and out. I was able to vote. All right, Mike Ortel. Yeah, I like this guy. He's great, too. So how long is that for? Is that for the rest of the week? Yes, it goes all the way through the rest of the week. I believe early voting ends on Sunday, and then obviously Tuesday is the general is the uh, primary election for Tuesday. And, you know, if you've got your ballot, absentee ballot, and you want to fill it out, turn it in, there's a box right there uh, at the supervisor election and at the library where you can turn it in. Or if you prefer to do just what I did today and, Early vote, take your ID and go vote. I mean, it's uh, it's important that we all exercise our right to vote. You gotta, if you you like what I'm doing, you vote. If you don't like what I'm doing, you know, you can vote me out too. I, that, that, that's what the will of the people is, and that's what it'll be. Right? I, yeah, I gotta get my sticker, Bob. I'm like you. I want to get that sticker that says I voted. You know, I, <laughs> I gotta voted, get. Yep. Yeah. All right, Bob. Absolutely. Well, we're going to uh, be ending the show here shortly. And uh, there's anything you want to show to kind of say to the audience to end the show, Bob? I want to thank everybody who has given me, who has worked for my campaign, who has donated their time and efforts and believed in our message since early on, like you and many other folks that have come out there and said, hey, Bob, you know, I like what you're doing. Thank you for being there for us. Thank you for putting yourself out there and working for us. You know, I want to thank everybody. And then I want to ask folks, we got to continue. There's still so much to do, and uh, I'm only halfway there. So, uh, again, I'm not on the primary. I'll be in the general election. Uh, look for me in the general election. You want to volunteer the campaign, go to our website, www.bobcortez.com, or send us a message through the email, bob at bobcortez.com, and I'll be able to put you together with our team, and if anybody wants yard signs, all that other stuff, give us a ring. Great, Bob. And, and people, he is receiving receptive. He is reachable. He's not one of those guys who's not going to answer the phone. He'll return the call back. He's been that with me for over three years. Bob, I want to thank you so much for what you're doing for our community and keep on doing the great job that you're doing, Bob. We thank you. I thank you. I thank you for having me today. We hope to see you soon on, and on another Rock and Brew show about those events. Okay, I will. Definitely. Thank you, Bob. Have a good night. Take care. See ya. Bye. Okay, it's time to pay some bills around here, and let's take a listen to our sponsors. But before we do that, you know, you see, one of us can be run off, two of us can be disregarded, but a show's audience, together, we are a movement. And we'd like to start this new movement on our commercial breaks. The people that are fit in the audience, we want you to get down and knock out 22 push-ups for representing 22 every day that our soldiers commit suicide. It's a true number. 22 every day. Do this. Will you go down there and knock out 22? You got three minutes to get back. In the Army back during Desert Storm. But even then, he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now, 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our riding into full maturity. 
At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Hello, I'm Hector Elizondo, Emmy Award-winning actor, and I want to talk to you about getting older. My body hurts. My joints ache. And sometimes I forget. I forget that doing all your own scenes for a movie isn't always the best decision. Especially when you're galloping side saddle down a countryside road on a horse named Archie Bello, who seems to have only one speed. High. And pulling on his reins only seems to encourage him to go even faster. So, of course, my body hurts and my joints ache, but it's not because of my age. It's because I'm living my life. Oh, oh, Archie Bello! Don't let life pass you by. Take care of your brain health. It may just help you stay on top of your game. As soon as this scene wraps, I'm going to kiss the ground, thank Archie Bello for his outstanding performance, feed him a carrot, and visit brainhealth.gov. Find out how you can make the most of your brain as you age at brainhealth.gov. Every day, 70,000 puppies or kittens are born in the U.S. Cute, right? Well, what's not cute is that half of all litters are accidents. And when a kitten has a litter of oopsies and a puppy has a litter of uh uh-ohs, pretty soon you have thousands and thousands of OMGs. And that leads to millions of pets being killed in shelters each year. But if 80% of people with pets say they believe in spaying and neutering, then what gives? Turns out that those sweet little fuzzballs can get pregnant sooner than you think. A lot sooner. But here's the good news. You can stop the accident before it happens. You just have to remember one number. Four. As in four months. When you bring home Maggie or Ruby or Puddles or Clyde, get them fixed at four months old. They can be old enough to get pregnant. And it's definitely young enough to make a difference. Prevent more. Fix at month four. Visit fixat4.com for more information. Brought to you by Best Friends Animal Society. It took me a long time to be able to say Chandler has cancer. Because that is such a scary word. St. Jude takes care of absolutely everything. And knowing that we don't have to pay for all of the medical expenses, that's huge. St. Jude allowed me to focus on being a mom to Bryce. And sometimes I'm just in awe of the impact St. Jude has, not only on this community, but the world. St. Jude is uniquely positioned to advance the cures of pediatric cancer, I think better than any other institution in the world. The contributions make a big difference. Donors are important to us because you get the feeling that you have a team behind you. We have the resources and we have the focus, and so... If St. Jude doesn't do it, who will? St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures. Saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Well, it's getting Doc 030 for the show, and I'm just about ready to go into rack ops mode. But before I relax, never. One last promo. So go to SergeantDaveMatthews at gmail.com. For suggestions for the show's content. Or if you know a good piece of gear, a veteran's advocate, I'll get him on the show. Copy me again. Email me at SergeantDaveMatthews at gmail.com. Or you can go to my Facebook page and like the page at Remember the Fallen. All one word. Copy again. Remember the Fallen. All one word on Facebook. And you can also hit me on my Twitter handle at Heroic Memorials. Or if you're not into the Twitter bird chirping thing, you can go to my website at www.neverforgottenmorals.org and you can get the new coffee mugs and the hats. The Remember the Fallen coffee mugs and hats are available. And you can also mark your calendar every Thursday night on your phone at 8 p.m. Eastern Time at klrnradio.com. Select shows and tap whatever show is running at that time. And that should be my show every Thursday night. That's an order. Until all the troops come home. All right. Fall out. Pop smoke out.